Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So it's an honor to give class on the final verse of the whole canto. Chapter 24, text 61. And the meter is something I couldn't figure out. So I'll just kind of do my best. Palaya payasi dhatu supta shaktir muke biaha. Shruti ganam apanitam pratyupada pratyupada tatva. It's a tongue twister, huh? Deti jam akatayad yo brahma satya vratanam. Tamaham akila hetum jimha mina nantosmi. It's not the right meter, but I don't know the right one. We'll do it again. <laughs> Pralaya payasi dhatu supta shaktir muke biaha. Shruti ganam papanitam pratyupada pada tahatva. Ditijam akatayad yo brahma satyavratanam. Tamaham akila hetum jimha mina nantosmi. Glaya payasi dhatu supta shaktir muke biaha. Shruti ganam apinitam pratyupada hatva. Pralaya payasi dhatu supta shaktir muke biaha. Shruti ganam apanitam pratyupada tathatva. Dhuti jam akatayo yo brahma satyavratanam. Ladies, Pralaya payasi dhatu sup shaktir. Ruti ganam apanitam pratyupada tathatva. Dati jam akatayod yo brahma satya vratanam. Damaham akila hetum jimha mina natosmi. Brahma 
Pralaya Paya Siddhato Sukta Sukta Yuti Ganam Apanitam Pratyupada Dada Pratanam Dham Aham Akilahitum Jim Hamina Natosmi Pralaya Payasi in the water of inundation. Datuhu from Lord Brahma. Supta Shaktehe who was inert because of sleeping. Mukhebhyaha from the mouths. Shuti Ganam Vedic records. Apanitam stolen. Pratyupadata gave back to him. Hatva by killing. Ditijam the great demon. Akatayat explained. Yaha one who. Brahma. Vedic knowledge, such a vratanam for the enlightenment of such a vrata and the great saintly persons. Tam <clears throat> unto him, aham I, akilahetum unto the cause of all causes. Jim. Jema Minam appearing as and pretending to be a great fish. Nata Asmi, I offer my respectful obeisances. So I'm going to go back before I read the translation and purport. The previous verses were not read, correct? Subal? The ones that have no purport, they were read? Oh, really? Huh? On Saturday. Okay. Well, they're connected to this one because this one's a summary. So the last verse that was done was what? 58. 58. That's like a three-sentence purport, that one. Okay. So 59 plus this Plus 60, plus 61, 59. This story concerning the great King Satya Vrata and the fish incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, is a great transcendental narration. Anyone who hears it is delivered from the reactions of sinful life. Text 60. One who narrates this description of the Matsya incarnation and King Satyavrata will certainly have all his ambitions fulfilled and he will undoubtedly return home back to Godhead. Text 61. This one. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead who pretended to be a gigantic fish who restored the Vedic literature to Brahma when Brahma awakened from sleep and who explained the essence of Vedic literature to King Satyavrata and the great saintly persons. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Here is a summary of, King, of Satyavrata's meeting with the fish incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu's purpose was to take back all the Vedic literatures from the demon Hayagriva and restore them to Lord Brahma. Incidentally, by his causeless mercy, the Lord spoke with Satyavrata. The word 
such a vrata nam is significant because it indicates that those on the level of King Satyavrata can take knowledge from the Vedas delivered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whatever is spoken by the Supreme Lord is accepted as Veda, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. Vedanta Krid Veda Vid or the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the compiler of all Vedic literature and he knows the purport of the Vedas. Therefore, anyone who takes knowledge from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or from Bhagavad Gita as it is, knows the purpose of the Vedas. Aham Eva Vedya. One cannot understand Vedic knowledge from the Veda Vada Ratas, who read the Vedas and misconstrued their subject matter. One has to know the Vedas from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 8th canto, 24th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Matsya, the Lord's Fish, fish Incarnation. <clears throat> and Prabhupada puts a little paragraph that he's completed this on September 1st, 1976, Red Hastami Day in Delhi, and refers to Naratam Das Thakur, Tandera Charana Sevi Bhakti Sanevas, Janame Janame Hai E Abhilas. I am attempting to present Srimad Bhagavatam in the English language by the order of my spiritual master, Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, and by his grace, the work of, trans of translation is gradually progressing, and the European American devotees who have joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement are helping me considerably. Thus, we have expectations of finishing the great task before my passing away. All glories to Sri Guru Guranga. The um, these concluding verses give what is sometimes there in, in Vedic literature, the, the benediction to the reader, or the speaker, or the listener, and wishes will be filled, and you go back to Godhead. Hopefully wishes are go back to Godhead, and not entanglement in the material energy. But the, the all-auspicious personality of Godhead is present in the narration of his pastimes. His pastimes are him, and the narration of his pastimes are him. The whole of the Srimad Bhagavatam is him. It's the personality of Godhead in a literary form. And the, the last verses, as Prabhupada says, it's a summary. So those verses, the collective verses that you heard on Saturday. Saturday? What happened Sunday? Uh, okay, so, okay. So, mentioned there is the, the second fish incarnation. So there's two. And this one is the, an, an exceptional in, incarnation of Matsya Avatar and he especially favors King Satyavrata so he appears to Satyavrata and this partial inundation etc takes place so he has this service for King Satyavrata to put male and female of all species on the boat and great sages on the boat and Noah's Ark same. I mean, instead of saying Noah, it's King Satyavrata. Or instead of saying King Satyavrata, it's Noah. But it's the same 
understanding. And the Supreme Lord, in addition, here it, speak, it says he spoke the knowledge of the Vedas in a summary manner to King Satyavrata and all the sages so there was no mistake about what transcendence is. Prabhupada is pointing out Satyavrata Nam means persons on the standard or caliber of King Satyavrata, they can hear the Vedas directly from the personality of Godhead. And for the rest of us, hearing the, the scripture depicting or displaying, presenting transcendental teachings of the personality of Godhead, it's the same, same spiritual potency, same spiritual potency. Um, so he, Matsya, although in the form of a fish, he spoke the Vedas twice. Once was directly to King Satyavrata and the sages on the boat. And the second was after the water subsided, or as the water was subsided, this partial devastation, it was the night of Brahma. And at the end of the night of Brahma, he was, the Vedas were emanating from his mouth by sound and exactly how you steal sound isn't, so clear, but one demon named Hayagriva stole the Vedas from Brahma, and Brahma was alarmed. You don't give knowledge to a demon, they'll, they'll misuse it and make havoc. So Brahma offered intense prayers to Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu came and killed the demon, took the Vedas from him and gave them back to Brahma. So that demon is mentioned in the purport, his name was Hayagriva. And just because it's um, nice to know these things, there's two other personalities with the name Hayagriva. And one of them is Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu manifested a form of Hayagriva. So there's the demon Hayagriva, and Hayagriva means literally one who has a horse head. So Lord Vishnu appeared as Hayagriva and spoke the knowledge of the Vedas to Brahma. Now, there are different days of Brahma and uh, the different ways in which the Supreme Lord appears to him. Our Lord Brahma uh, mm -hmm of this particular universe, he received the Vedas from Krishna, starting with Krishna's flute and receiving the knowledge of the Vedas through mantra and so forth. So there's different Brahmas and different universes and different forms of the Lord and Hayagriva is one of them, form of Lord Vishnu. And then there's a third. So the demon Hayagriva the form of Lord Vishnu, Hayagriva, and the third is mentioned uh, not in detail, but kind of indirectly. Well, in Canto 6, and uh, little detail, not too much, the after um, Indra lost his kingdom because of offending Brahaspati. Brahaspati left the heavenly planets. The demons invaded and took over the heavenly planets. So Indra was having a problem. He had no place to live, no kingdom to rule. So he went to um, Lord Brahma, with his problem, Lord, Lord Brahma admonished him and then gave him a solution. The solution was, go to the son of Trashta, whose name is Vishwarup. He, he's really, really expert at Vedic sacrifices, and he'll help you regain your kingdom. So the following 
Brahma's advice, that's what Indra did, and Vishwarup, there's details, but Vishwarup became the replacement performer of Vedic sacrifices in the absence of Brahaspati, who became the priest of Indra and the demigods. And um, part of what he did was he gave mantras, Vishwarup, Brahmana Vishwarup gave mantras whereby the body of Indra could be protected. There's a whole chapter in Raina, Kavacha. Kavacha means shield. So the shield of this mantras of Lord Narayan protected Indra. Indra went back to battle and defeated the demons and got the kingdom back. Yay, Indra's got his kingdom back. He's happy again. And then Indra understood, wow, Vishwarup's good. And I hear that he knows how to perform the yagya to produce soma rasa so we could enjoy soma rasa in the heavenly realms. So Vishwarup was engaged doing that. And Vishwarup, having Trashta as his father, but having um, as a mother someone from the Daitya side, the demon side, when he performed the Soma Yagya, he gave some of it to his mother and his mother's relatives, demons. Indra became furious and he cut off, in his moment of fury, he cut off the heads, plural, of Vishwarup. And big sinful reaction was coming his way. He did different things to relieve himself of that sinful reaction. And that wasn't good enough because the father of Vishwarup named Trashta uh, wanted to punish Indra for his wickedness. And so he performed a yagya with the intent of creating a personality who would kill Indra. But he made a little mistake in the mantras. So instead of getting uh, or producing a living entity who would kill Indra, he got a living entity who would be killed by Indra. Just made one syllable wrong. And so Vritrasura appeared from the sacrificial fire. Vritrasura and Asura was given the assignment of um, going after Indra and the heavenly planets. So not Indra's ruling in the heavenly planets, but Vitrasura was so powerful. Big, 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 big uh, battle. And so Indra didn't know what to do. He went to Lord Vishnu, help. And Lord Vishnu admonished him and then gave him a solution. And the solution was, go to the great sage Dadichi, go to the great sage Dadichi, ask him for his bones, and when he gives you his bones, take the bones of Dadichi to Vishvakarma, and Vishvakarma will make you a special thunderbolt with which you can kill Vritrasura. So when making reference to Dadichi, the Bhagavatam Canto 6 speaks about Ashva Shira. Ashva Shira means the same thing as Hayagriva. He had a horse head. Here's how he had a horse head, Dadichi. Dadichi was very elevated. Very elevated in mysticism, and knowledge and wisdom, a great, great sage. So when uh, Indra, excuse me, when Brahma approached Dadichi, um, when Indra approached Dadichi, so, so he re again refers to him as this Ashvashira. So he's called Ashvashira Horsehead because, yeah, at a certain point in time, 
back in history, in his life, Dadichi was approached by the physicians of the heavenly planets and their twins named, what's their names? Ashvini Kumaras. Ashvini Kumaras. So the Ashvini Kumaras approached liberal Dadichi and said, can you give us transcendental knowledge? He said, sure. But I'm very busy right now with a performance of some duties. Come back later. And I'll give you transcendental knowledge. So see you later. We'll come back later. And meanwhile, somebody sent Indra a text message. And Indra found out that Dadishi is going to give the Ashvini Kumaras transcendental knowledge. So he, Indra, didn't want that. So he approached Dichi and said, don't do that. And if you do that, I'll cut off your head and give you a horse head. No, give, I'll cut off your head. So uh, he went away. Then the Ashwini Kumaras came back and said, OK, we're ready for transcendental knowledge. And Tadichi said, well, I can do that, but there's a problem. What's that? Indra said, I'll cut off my head if I do it. No, oh, we're, we're physicians from the heavenly planets. We have a solution to that problem. Um, we'll cut off your head and we'll put on a horse's head and then you can speak transcend knowledge to us through the horse's head. And then when Indra comes along and cuts off the horse's head, we'll put your regular head back on. No problem. So liberal, the Dichi said, sure, that sounds like a great plan. They cut off his head. He spoke transcendental knowledge through the head of a horse. Indra heard that he violated his threat, and he came and cut off his horse's head. Then the Ashwini Kumaras put his regular head back on, and he was back to normal. So that's the Dichi, that's the third Hayagriva because Hayagriva means one who has a horse's head. So literally, just like Lord Nishingadev, we're going to be honoring Nishingadev's appearance, he has a form of half man, half lion. He has a lion head and lion claws and lion teeth, and that's Lord Nishingadev. And Hayagriva has a horse's head. The rest of his body was Lord Vishnu's form, but horse's head, Hayagriva. And the demon doesn't give a detail exactly, did he have a horse's head or did he look like a horse or something? But Hayagriva. And then the third is Dadichi, is also known as Ashva Shira or Hayagriva because he spoke the Vedas, transcendental knowledge to the Ashvini Kumaras with his uh, replacement horse's head. That's Puranic appreciation. It can be confusing if you hear, because here it speaks of Hayagriva as a demon, and then later on you hear, wait a minute, Hayagriva is Lord Vishnu. Why is Lord Vishnu being called a demon? So it's just different personalities, different pastimes, different all kinds of different things, different yugas, different Lord Brahmas, even, different universes. The Bhagavatam, <coughs> Jiva Goswami says, the Bhagavatam does not make this differentiation of chronology and so many other things. Um, just like there's only mention, no detail of, you know, the second Matya incarnation. The second one is during Satyavrata's life, and it doesn't give much detail about the first Matya He, you know, he, he's not ob obliged to give all that, you know, vast history, make the book too big. So it says he, he's giving essences that will help us become attached to the personality of Godhead. 
And that seems to be the essence of what Prabhupada is emphasizing in the purport is persons of the caliber of such a vrata, they have the qualification to hear directly from the personality of Godhead. And whatever comes from the personality of Godhead, that's Vedas. If that's a definition, what's Veda? Well, it's knowledge that comes from the perfect person. That's the personality of Godhead. So whatever he says, that's Veda. It's perfect. From an infallible, you won't get perfect knowledge from a fallible source. Sorry, but you won't get perfect knowledge from a fallible source. If you want perfect knowledge, you have to get knowledge from that perfect knowledge from a perfect person. That's the personality of Godhead. Or one who can transmit that knowledge of the personality of Godhead transparently, then you can get transcendental knowledge. Not a small qualification to present knowledge transparently. It's a great responsibility. And in our stage, we we were becoming purified. It, it, we're, bring, we're being given the opportunity to become purified by hearing and presenting transcendental knowledge. Even though we're not on the level of King Satyavrata or other great personalities in disciplic succession. But it's a means of purification. That's how we should take it. When we're given the opportunity to speak, it's not an opportunity to display your knowledge, it's an opportunity to be a transmitter of the message of transcendence. And then last, just a comment on Prabhupada's little paragraph at the end, having completed today, Radhastami Day, 1976. This is the completion of Canto 8. It was you know, a major undertaking to translate all 12 cantos, because it particularly, 10th canto is huge. And way back in 1970, Prabhupada had given a summary study of the 10th canto in the form of Krishna book. But in any case, he's hoping, didn't happen, he's hoping that he will be able to finish. He didn't get to finish. The Lord, we have our plan, the Lord has his plan, and the Lord wins because he's the Lord. But we still should have a plan of serving the Supreme Lord. He had that, Prabhupada had that plan from the 60s. And here it's 76. He has a plan to finish. Didn't get to finish. Because he did so many other things, not any other reason, so many other things. And the Lord had another plan. Give some service to the European and American devotees who are helping him, and particularly a group of Sanskrit scholars, mainly Gopi Puranadana Prabhu. Little inside story, Jitendriya. Little inside story, Dravida said, although the publication of, you know, the, from where Prabhupada finished onward, in big letters had Hridayananda Maharaj, or Hridayananda Das Goswami, and then in small letters, and Prabhupada disciples, the major work was done by Gopi Pranadana. The major work was done by Gopi Pranadana. All those purports, it was Gopi Pranadana. And then there were cer certain sections that Hridayananda Maharaj had a special hand in or more of a significant hand in, but otherwise it's Gopi Pranadana. So Prabhupada was giving some service for them, and then Gopi continued as we know, translating other things. And before he, he did this work of translating and making commentary on the remaining portion of the Bhagavatam, the unfinished portion, he had decades of work of Sanskrit scholarship for the BBT and otherwise. And any, anyone that had, well, those of us that had any association with Gopi, Pranadana Prabhu, know that he had intense, not normal or you know nice, he had intense fidelity to Prabhupada and maintaining integrity with Prabhupada's message and mood. Because when you're 
scholarly or you have access to other stuff, you can get spun out. It's, it's, it's more likely to happen than fidelity and intense loyalty. Spun out. He didn't. I mean, I had conversations with him where he described this and that and the other thing without the detail. And there was plenty of opportunity to pull him this way, pull him that way, pull him the other way. Intense loyalty to Prabhupada's mood and transmitting that mood and message. Very, 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 very strong spirit, tenacious. And therefore very dear. And therefore entrusted with this responsibility to translate the other the other literatures that he did. Tattva Sandarbha and Lago Bhagavatamrita and there's some other things in the pipeline. Not an easy task. I hope he's going to do some of the other Sandarbhas. I don't know what's coming. Okay, so I'm going to end there, see if there's any discussion. Jitendriya? I remember Donavir Swami was here and uh, we had a verse. I mean, I'm, I have a hard time pronouncing the words as it is. But what he did is he did the word-for-word uh, -word translation first, then he did the verse. Uh, I don't know. Have you seen other people do that? I don't know anything about it. Oh, I just thought it was helpful the way he did it. It was done, the, there was a period of time, I'm sure, well, you might probably know, I know for sure, <clears throat> Pradumna, who Prabhupada called Panditji, was given the task of doing synonyms. And then Prabhupada came to New York because he had the Bhaktivedanta purports done for, uh, you know, a large number of pages, chapters, maybe even a canto and a half or something like that. And Pradumna G was uh, lazy intelligent with emphasis on lazy. And so he was way behind and Prabhupada found out, he got the report, Prabhupada, instead of doing his translation work one night, did all the synonyms, word for word synonyms in one night and scolded Pradumna, don't do like this. You're too much lazy. <laughs> so. There's an example of Prabhupada did the purport before he did the word for word. Yes. Um, Maharaj, what is, um, what happens when there is a partial devastation at the night? What of, happened when what? When there's a partial devastation at the night of Brahma. What happens? Um, the universe gets up to, and including the heavenly planets, gets drowned, filled with water. The water rises, partial devastation, up to that point. And before that water comes, there's fire. And everything turns to ashes, and then the ashes are dissolved in the water. The water rises. Before the fire, there's drought, no rain. And then everything becomes dry, easily burned, it burns, the water comes. So then in the, in the, the, this is the, commonly, this is unique circumstance, but commonly it's at the end of the night of Brahma. And so, uh, during his night, that's where the partial, so when he, in the, in the morning, he reconstructs that part that was destroyed and dissolved and covered with water. And then, you know, the, the population, to populate those planets that he has different arrangements. In the case of Satyavrati, he just had a boat when, you know, two of each kind. <laughs> Same as in the Old Testament, Noah's Ark. Two of each kind. Then just like, okay, guys, go to it. What, the devastation is over. We'll populate planets somewhere. 
Well, it's, it doesn't, it's not, there are different methods, as far as I understand. Sometimes it's, again, Brahma generates the prajapatis, and the prajapatis take that service on. Um, and um, for the, um, at the end of Brahma's lifetime, then, I mean... Total, not total, everything finished. Not just up to the heavenly planets, but the whole thing, including Brahma's planet, finished. Um, it, I heard before that Svetadivi is the only place that remains. What? Svetadvip is the only place that remains during devastation. After devastation. Yes. Because that's a spiritual planet. Therefore it remains. Anything else? Okay. Yes, Subal. Just a little bit on the chronology of this of the past in Guru Maharaj. Um, Lord Brahma took a nap. He took a nap. And that's yes, when that's, Hayek, right. that's he, when it wasn't the, the night, he took a nap. Yes, and that's when the demon Hajagriva took the Vedas yes, from him. Because he was napping. But so this whole thing happens when he took his nap. Not in the night, but during Correct. his nap. Okay. Thank you. Lord Brahma, you better watch out when you take a nap. Okay, thank you very much, Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Yeah.